Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the indicator lock, part number C6FS. This is what's called a single action commercial lock with an in use or vacant indicator in 26D or satin chrome. And here's what the unit looks like. So this is a privacy set is what it is. This is gonna be typically used in, uh, of course, bathrooms is where you're gonna really see this, restrooms. It is um, a very popular lock. Uh, indicator locks have been growing in popularity. It's 2021 now, they've probably been growing in popularity for the last five years. While indicator functions have always existed, certainly on mortise locks, the development of indicator locks on other lock types like a, like a, well, this would be a tubular lock, in fact, um, is relatively new and really fits um, a need in the marketplace. And what I mean is that in the last five years, a lot of people want occupancy indicators. Well, historically, they're only available on mortise locks. Now, what I just said is several hundreds of dollars. The indicator alone can be a hundred or a two hundred dollar add to the cost of the lock not two hundred but for sure a hundred dollar add only to the cost of a mortise lock i've even had people order privacy mortise locks there was a dental office that we did in new jersey somewhere in that area where the client wanted occupancy indicators on both sides so that someone on the outside knew if it was occupied or vacant and that the person on the inside knew whether or not they were locked or unlocked <laughs> okay so they're popular. Um, well, enter indicator lock. And what they're producing here is a really simple and straightforward sort of uh, means by which to let someone know whether the bathroom is occupied or otherwise. Um, recently have supplied this to a client with a salon and just want the, the owner wanted their clients to know whether or not it was you know, free to enter. It's very handy, very helpful to be able to look at an occupancy indicator on a door. And as a result of that desirable functionality, we've seen it permeate uh, through the market in terms of availability, in terms of options and designs, and most importantly, cost. These are substantially less expensive than what you would otherwise spend. And what's nice about the indicator lock is the fact that your door is probably already prepped for a two and an eighth inch hole. There you go. Not a lot to really contend with. Uh, when it comes to installation. Uh, let's go over uh, what's in the box. So first of all, you're going to get the exterior and the interior. That exterior occupancy indicator is governed by locking and unlocking the turn button on the inside. Okay, So you're already locking or unlocking it. Vacant will allow me to rotate my hand is blocking it is the problem will allow me to rotate the lever to operate it when i set that to in use now i'm rigid on the outside i can't enter so it does both of those things conversely you do have to unlock it from the inside in order to be able to exit not an uncommon function that you're going to find this is going to include a latch bolt. The latch bolt will allow you to install this on doors that are prepped for two and three eighths uh, or two and three quarter preparations. It's as simple as pulling that back. Two and three eighths or two and three quarter. That's a dimension from the edge of the door to the center of where the spindle is going to go through that hub. You can see it's set at two and three quarter. The face of the latch bolt is two and a quarter inch tall. It's one inch wide. The depth is typical 530 seconds. This is a spring latch, meaning there's no dead latch back here, which is typical for a privacy set. Okay, Keyed functions will have a guard or a deadlocking tab back here to prevent someone from loiting that. A passage or a privacy would usually not have that. This will include a stainless steel uh, strike. We call these, um, you can use your imagination, you can see why we might call it a D strike. It's also called a full lip strike. The proper term is full lip, which is two and a quarter tall. The overall width is about inch and three quarter, but strikes are measured from the center line of the screw hole to the edge of the lip. And this is gonna be about an inch and an eighth, inch and three sixteenths. 
translation, that's the common size. You could end up needing a lip length that's longer, or maybe even one that's shorter, depending on the application. But about an inch and three sixteenths is the Swiss Army knife size of lip lengths when it comes to strike plates. If you have unusually thick casing or a deep inset, you're probably going to need to look at a longer length lip. But for every thousand of these that you sell, for every ten thousand, for every hundred thousand, for every half a million you sell, you're probably going to sell one extended lip strike. So I wouldn't worry about bumping into it uh, in terms of a requirement. This will also include a dust box. Dust boxes are nice because what they do is they provide a clean, finished installation on the inside. Okay. A lot of people don't take the time to install the dust box, but I would. I wouldn't want the particulate of the interior of the wall construction you know, encroaching into my living space uh, is the bottom line. These, this strike is nice because it has this substantial... Uh, surface area that creates a means by which the latch bolt will retract smoothly uh, is what that is what that does there rather than it being just a hole that the back side of the strike plate has to grind against okay you're also going to get the screw package you should need no more than six screws for that for this and indeed there's only six screws two for the latch two for the strike two for the lock body, which are going to be in here. And then the next thing I'm going to show you is the tool that will allow you to remove the inside lever. Okay, that comes off. Your rosette will come off. hands are now oily okay bear with me just took a little bit of what we would call from Chicago the old killer Kowalski Okay, so just needed to rotate that to the point where it's now... <laughs> I think I just put it back on. Okay. All we needed to do is just to work that off a little bit. What happens is these indentations here and here, they get put on right here onto the part of the rose support, and then you just rotate them, and they kind of just click on. And, you know, admittedly, my hands are oily after having touched this lock. And uh, you could see demonstrated here, if I were to take that and just then rotate it, it would click on and stay in place. Now, anyway, we were discussing those two screws that go through here. They're going to run into the tapped posts that are here. And that's what's going to allow you to get <clears throat> all of this installed. <coughs> Now you'll have your lock on your door, the two screws will be in. You simply bring your rows, and then you rotate it, then you bring your lever. I've got that on backwards, I can see that. Then you bring your lever. Okay, everything's clipped back together and works just the way that it should. Okay, and that tool is the last item that's actually in the box, except the installation instructions, which are here. So let's switch now to the screen view and let's go over the installation instructions. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, let's go over the item that we're looking at. Here's our Indicator lock, C6FS. Let's take a look at the other indicator locks, C6. And that's going to show us the different finishes. 
PVD brass, which is what would be considered a lifetime brass, polished chrome, and then satin chrome is what's available currently on these locks. So we're looking at the uh, the FS, which is satin chrome. Extended description information is here, but first let's take a look at the photographs that we have posted. Here's your packaging. Everything in the packaging. Vacant. Green background in use with a red background. The two parts separated from each other. There's your latch bolt. Two and three eighths is what it's set to. Slide that back for two and three quarter. Then the rest of the parts included, and then your installation instructions. Okay. This is a privacy set. Bathrooms, bedrooms, probably just bathrooms with an occupancy indicator. Satin chrome. This can be used on either hand of door without any trouble. And when we switch back to the screen view, uh, pardon me, the uh, camera view, I'll show you how to reverse this. There's only one way to do it. When you're familiar with locks, it's obvious, you know, that the outside uh, lever has to come off. The uh, likely the rows will have to get rotated, and probably underneath here is going to be multiple, um, you know, two sets of signage so that you could rotate this lock in either direction. Large occupancy indicator in use and vacant. Handle is fabricated from zinc alloy. Um, so zinc uh, is what the handle is made from. That's uh, that. There are three hallmarks really of zinc. It's inexpensive. Number one. Number two. It takes a nice finish. And number three. It's heavy. It feels quite heavy in the hand. Stainless steel construction. I don't. Not all of it is stainless. The exposed parts are very likely stainless. There's some zinc dichromate steel that's here as well. Push button inside for locking and unlocking. That's actually turn button. The emergency hole outside. You can insert a flattened object into the exterior to operate um, the internal construction of the lock so that you can bypass and, and, and enter. They say that this is UL10C, three hour fire rated and ships with mounting hardware. Um, I'm going to say that the answer is no to that. And the reason is, is that it does not have any evidence on the face of the latch bolt of any UL stamping, which is where lock manufacturers put the UL insignia. Now, UL10C is the Canadian Underwriters Laboratory, not affiliated at all um, with UL America. Let's look at the cut sheet, see if it's actually on there. Yeah, they don't indicate any UL listing. I'm, I'm going to go with that being errant and not being there. Um, since we're looking at the cut sheet, they say that it's grade 3 here, but in another place they have it as a grade 2 lock, which I think is on there. No, forgive me, it is grade 3. Grade three would be considered a quarter million cycle. So this is meant to, uh, it, it has been tested and has found to exceed a quarter million cycles on the lock before it failed. Who knows if it ever did fail. They just got to, you know, 250,000 cycles and then were permitted to stop um, and then test and inspect the lock. And if it's found to still work, then it's compliant. Door thickness range, one and three sixteenths to two inch. Uh, okay, that cut sheet, let's take another look at that. Gives us the dimensional properties of the unit itself. And one nice thing about this, I will tell you, is this 45 degree rotation. There are other grade three locks that you will require a substantially greater amount of rotation to get the latch pulled back. Not so with this indicator lock. People do not like having to rotate the trim so far to get the latch to pull back. Um, I don't see anything else here that is new for us. So let's switch to the installation instructions. Okay, this will be this will be quick because there's not much to it. Set your back set two and three eighths or two and three quarter. They don't obviously give you a well they do. I was about to say they don't give you a template. They certainly do. Suitable for door thicknesses inch and three eighths to two inch. Um, 
you know, this is going to be on the installation instructions that you'll have. You're going to mark the edge of the door to the center of the hole, two and three eighths or two and three quarter. And what that's going to be is, actually I had a drawing already here from another video. So what I've drawn here are four door edges, a square edge, radius edge, rabbited edge, and beveled edge. You're not going to use either of these with this lock. Be mindful that if you're dealing with a square edge door where you measure from either side of the door to two and three eighths or two and three quarter, that's going to be an alignment. But if you try that trick on a beveled edge door, you go back the same distance, it's not going to be an alignment. Back set is actually measured from the center of the thickness of the door back to the center line. So be mindful that when you're measuring your two and three eighths or two and three quarter that you're putting it in the correct location. Okay, so your preparation, they don't give us much information here, but it's what we would call a typical 160 prep if it's at two and three eighths. But regardless, your latch bolt is gonna be, as I had said earlier, two and a quarter tall, one inch wide, 530 seconds deep. Your back set from the edge of the door, the center of the door to the edge, two and three eighths or two and three quarter. Install your strike, prep it if needed. Um, you're gonna want to take the center line of your lock, top of the door to the center of your lock, uh, and then measure from the underside of the header to the center of your strike and add an eighth of an inch. So if that dimension was, you know, 40 inch you would on the door you'd measure 40 and 1 8 on the frame showing you how to put this together you know the occupancy side goes on the secured side of the door so pretty easy in that regard not much to really worry about that will slide in and slide together after you of course have uh, potentially reversed the lock which I'll show you uh, on camera because this you know, remove the lever, um, rotate the rows, rotate the chassis actually, and put it back together. Um, there is not an emergency key here that they're, ref actually is there, no, there's not. There is no emergency key that's included, but that would be your typical butter knife sort of scenario, okay? So once you've handed the lock, which we'll go over in a moment, you install the exterior, the latch bolt is already installed. The chassis will go on from the outside. Then from the inside, you're gonna make sure that you get that long spindle reached all the way down in through the lock and into the turn button assembly. Take your time, put it on straight. Tighten, install the two screws, tighten them by hand. Don't overly tighten them, otherwise the lock won't work correctly. And in particular, turning the thumb turn and operating the occupancy indicator will be quite uh, strained if the lock is too tight on the door. Okay, That's all there is to these installation instructions. Let's switch back to the screen view and look at the reversing procedure. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, so what hand do we have? Well, we've got either a right hand or we've got a right hand reverse. It can be either way. It just can't be a left hand or a left hand reverse. So, um, there's, you know, when you look at this, you might say to yourself, well, there's only one way this can happen. Um, and without interpreting the installation instructions, use your release tool. And you're going to remove that outside lever. Pop that tab in, pull the lever off, just put it down. Now, at this point, it's certainly going to be a matter of you're going to need to obviously rotate this, but what you really need to do is get that exterior rose off. That's okay that that thumb, that emergency release came off. I didn't know that it would fall off, but it's not a problem. So that rose will come off, and sure enough, there you go. Okay. So at this point, what you'd be able to do is just turn that over, put it back together. Now, we have our, to fully put it back together, if you recall, we had a right hand or a right hand reverse. 
Now we're going to have a left hand or a left hand reverse. Yep. One, one thing to be mindful when you're working with these locks, types of locks like this, gloves are really important. Sooner or later, you're going to catch a sharp shard. You know, you're going to really fatigue your hands. I would suggest wearing gloves. Also, um, you won't pick up all the oil on your hand either. So now we reverse that um, rose, basically, is all we did, and then put the lever back on. And now we have either a left hand or a left hand reverse. Super simple. Okay? That's how that works. As I had said earlier, you just want that to go in nice and straight. Oh, I've got it upside down. Works really well. Not, a, not any trouble at all. You can see that rotating this, rotating the inside moves that. So there's a direct drive or, tr or linkage between all of that stuff. So at the, bottom, at the end of the day, it's a pretty decent little lock. Let's switch back to the screen view and let's just wrap up and show you the additional resources for indicator lock. Okay, so below this video here, some uh, original factory images. There's a link here to the manufacturer's page and from there, you can pull up not only all of the indicator locks that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. I would recommend that you review this. They do not have a substantially exhaustive catalog, but when it comes to occupancy indicators, you're going to be able to see the part numbers for the different finishes that they have, the different functions that they have as well. Okay. So I would certainly recommend that you review this. They have a... Um, what they consider a heavy-duty version. They have a keyed version here. They have an ADA-compliant version as well. You'll note that the part number that we're looking at, the C6FS, is not listed as handicap-compliant. And um, the reasoning is, is because of that pesky thumb turn turning that uh, small thumb turn on the inside is what the trouble is. However, they have an answer to it, and here it is, the ADA compliant version, C5FS. Okay, these are clearly handed locks, so they're not apparently field reversible. Um, you're certainly going to want to be mindful of the fact that uh, if it's a public space, you'll need handicap compliance. If it's a fire-rated door, you're going to need to um, be absolutely sure that the lock you're putting on the door is also fire-rated. And in their catalog, I don't see a reference to that. Okay, nice quality people over at Indicator Lock. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Every once in a while, a manufacturer will come across a video that we've done, an unsolicited video that we've done of one of their products, and they'll call up and say, or send an email, say, hey, that was great. Thank you very much. You want to do another one? Well, that's what happened with indicator lock. Uh, the gal there reached out to me because she had seen a video I had made and said, would you make another one, basically? Absolutely. Where you're going to use this lock is going to be in that sort of low volume application. <clears throat> I believe like a salon. It's not going to have more than a several dozen uses a day. You know, it is rated for a quarter million cycles. I think that it's going to work out just well. People want ask for the occupancy indicator. People don't realize how nice it is to have an occupancy indicator on a lock until you've become accustomed to using it, okay? Or to knowing that you're in a space that has it. And in fact, I'd go so far as to say that people would prefer to go to a place where they have an occupancy indicator. Door is closed. Okay, is the room occupied or not? You know, you don't want to intrude. This makes it very clear. There is a local cafe that I frequent about once a week um, and they have an occupancy indicator on their door. It's a very busy place for about two hours in the morning on a Sunday. Very, very hyper busy. 
you just want to know what you're dealing with and you can see that because of the color coding from basically across the room so it's a very nice feature and I think that people the client base I think they actually prefer when uh, the commercial spaces the businesses that they frequent have occupancy indicators and I would consider indicator lock an option for that as well any questions on this C6FS privacy function in satin chrome or any other indicator lock product please feel free to reach out to us and thank you again thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video please click thumbs up please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know thank you